Good morning, CSLN. I'm Lucia Cooper-Smith. I am your host for today, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to Sunday Morning with the Center for Spiritual Living, located here at Unity Nashville. I'd also like to welcome those of you who are watching online and invite you to join us anytime if you're in Nashville. So we are so excited today because our speaker is Rosemary Cathcart, and the title of her talk is The Quiet Power of a Gentle Spirit. We're also so pleased to welcome two of our very talented guest artists, Sean Galloway and Yvonne Smith. So, if you're wondering who CSLN is, we are an inclusive, open spiritual community for anyone seeking a deeper connection with something greater in their lives. If you've never been to a center for spiritual living, we believe there is one God. Whether we call it God, spirit, or the universe, there are many paths to it. And we are here to love, honor, and support you, whatever your divine path is. Wherever you may find yourself on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. So welcome to our center. Let's move into spirit. And I invite you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Turn within. And be here right now in this present moment. And know with me that there is one God, one heart surrounding us right now, always. The one source that created all things, created me, created everyone here, it is still creating. It lives in each of us right now. There is a golden thread of truth that moves through all spiritual paths, and we bless them all. We are open to the lesson today. We breathe in the willingness to experience something fabulous today, something that allows us to feel more connected, something that shows us how to live our most magnificent lives. We are so grateful for that inspiration, for this lesson that Rosemary is sharing with us today, for the beautiful music that Sean and Yvonne will share with us, so grateful for this day and for being together to experience it as a community. And so it is. So it is. In the highest 
I'm a practitioner at the, here at the center, and I'm doing the reading today. The title of the book, This Thing Called You, by our founder, Ernest Holmes. You are to know that good keep you in perfect activity, surround you with love and friendship, and brings the experience of joy with everything you do. You are to impart an atmosphere of confidence and faith, which uplifts and enlightens everything in your environment. It is only as you live affirmative that you can be happy, knowing that there is one spirit in which everyone lives, moves, and has his being. You are to feel the spirit, not only in your consciousness, but also in your affairs. You are to hold conscious communion with the spirit, humanity. In a hand claps, you can feel its warmth and color and the exchange of thought. You are to feel the presence of the divine. You are to sense it in everything. You are united with all. You are the one with the eternal light itself. The presence of spirit within you blesses everyone you meet, tends to heal everything you touch, bring gladness into the life of everyone you contact. Therefore, you are a blessing to yourself, to mankind, and to the day in which you live, and so it is. So if you could just close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just relax, free your mind, and know this truth in the first person. Make it personal for yourself. I know today there is one infinite presence and power in my life, and it is God. It is my highest power and presence, and I am one with it. It expresses through me as love. Nothing enters into my experience but joy, integrity, friendships. And the good I realize for myself, I realize for all others. I release all doubt and fears. The perfect law of good 
is operating through me, and I joyfully accept it. I know I am guided and directed by an intelligent power which goes before me and made perfect my way. I am blessed with the wisdom of God. Today, I rest in divine assurance and this divine security. I know not only that all is well with my soul, my spirit and my mind, all is well with my affairs and everything that concerns me. I am grateful for life, for love, for joy, for my spiritual community, for our speaker today, our visitors today. We are blessed to have our new church, a new minister that is being drawn to us by love. And I affirm this truth for everyone and release it to the law, knowing the highest and best for everyone. And together we say, and so it is.
John Galloway, Yvonne Smith. All right. Let's welcome the Reverend Rosemary Cathcart. Good morning. You know, what a lovely day. It's gorgeous outside, and we have this talent. It never gets old. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Yvonne. Don't take it for granted, because you can't find this anywhere else. I've tried. Thank you to our wonderful musical director, Larry Farragalli and Jimmy Lopez. How lucky we are. I am one grateful human to be enjoying this wonderful full circle moment. For me, it's all about me. When I first moved to Nashville, Unity of Nashville was my spiritual community. And we were meeting at the Hillsborough High School. Again, church in the box, right? And um, I stayed with that community as we began to create the bond drive to build this building, to buy this property. So here I am. I've spoken at Unity over the years through either the church or a wonderful thing called First Sunday, if any of you remember that. But this is lovely to be here representing Science of Mind, my spiritual community. Um, when the church first opened, and this is so, I mean, everything Sean and Yvonne sang this morning was so sweet and welcoming. The minister who was a part of Unity when I first joined was this fabulous man named Jimmy Scott, unflappable. He had the best sense of humor. And of course, then I went to Mitch Johnson with another fabulous sense of humor. But shortly after we opened in this building, um, Reverend Scott sponsored a community event where on a Sunday, different churches hosted other faiths. And we hosted the Baha'i faith. And after the service, the leader of the Baha'i community came up to Reverend Scott and he said, I noticed that in your restrooms, there are no partitions between the commodes. Is that part of your faith? You had to know, Jimmy. Without skipping a beat, he said, yes, we of the unity tradition prefer to keep our focus forward in integrity. <laughs> you know, we had just opened like a week before. So this community here was created with that same sense of love and humor and friendliness that I think we all need. Um, and who would have thought Unity and CSLN are now a community of high magic? It is what it is for this moment. We don't usually think in terms of the circle of life while we're in the middle of the circle, but I'm pretty certain that 30 years ago, 1994, when Elton John was writing the music for The Lion King, and he wrote these words, I think they were just for me, maybe they apply to you too, right? In the circle of life, it's the wheel of fortune. It's the leap of faith. It's the band of hope till we find our place on the path unwinding in the circle of life. 
Does that resonate with anybody? Oh, yeah. He had no idea he was talking about my journey because it certainly has been confusing, tumultuous, and a little uncertain at times. But the thing is, like Reverend Scott said, we keep our focus forward moving and we keep going. We get points for that. When I became a Universal Brotherhood minister, I was welcomed and greeted with only kindness. Yes, there was an unspoken but given assumption of power, but only within the bounds of gentle and heart-centered service. Anything other than that was not acceptable. The quiet power of a gentle spirit was demonstrated by UBM's founders, Rick and Jenny Prigmore, in all of their dealings. I found those same lessons in unity teachings and then, of course, in science of mind. What I have come to understand also is that the loudest voice in the room may not be the one to follow. Perhaps they're just scared to and trying to find their own right path, kind of like a two-year-old having a temper tantrum. Many years ago when I was being trained with a psychologist, he gave me the most brilliant piece of advice. He said, if you're having a difficult time with somebody, look at them and imagine them as a five-year-old, and you will be much more compassionate. Try that. Try that. It really is a good skill. Whew. We seem to be living right now in a fractured and disruptive social structure at the moment, but what if we could become the catalyst for peace. What if one quiet moment of contemplative stillness could inspire a better way for the entire world? After all, we do believe in the law of attraction, correct? Uh-huh. That works for good things and bad things. That law of attraction is always in motion. And that works whether somebody is being loud and disruptive. It also works, I think, more effectively in the quiet moments. It's more than just a theory. We are all connected down to the core fabric of our very being. This is what the Hindu tradition calls the Atman. A-T-M-A-N, the shared immortal self. We are simply bundles of electromagnetic energy. I'm projecting energy to each one of you here today and to everybody who's listening in parts unknown because there is no such thing as time and space difference. You could be here physically, like Ursula, or you could be watching in Boynton Beach, Florida, like my friend Elaine. And the same projection of energy is being sent equally, just as you are projecting energy back to me. All we are are energetic fields. How do we manage them? How do we think about them? How do we embrace that power? Every atom in the universe holds patterns of energy and bounces them back and forth to anything in their path. So whose path are you in now? Interesting. A point that illustrates this to me in a very stunning fashion comes from the brilliant Dr. Gabor Mate with whom I've had the privilege of doing some online work. Now, Dr. Mate was born in January in 1944 in Budapest, Hungary. Shortly after his birth, a desperate mother took him to the doctor because he would not stop crying. She had tried everything. The doctor said, it's no use 
all of the Jewish boys in the city are crying. Something big is coming. Can you feel that? On March 12th, 1944, Hitler and his Nazi forces invaded the city. Astonishing. What did these pre-verbal newborns sense individually and collectively that their lives and their entire world were in peril? There's no such thing as a private thought. There's no such thing as a private emotion or a projection of energy. It all hits a target. That's what intuition is all about. It's God tapping you on the shoulder, saying, pay attention, listen, ask better questions, but then also be open to hear. It's a two-parter. So we live today in a competitive, loud, fractured, and quite disruptive world. So what do we think would be the best antidote? Getting louder? Getting more competitive? Revving up our anger to an even higher state? No, not at all. If you've ever had the opportunity to work with what's called Kirlian photography, it measures the energy patterns between people. And when you are working with somebody who really knows how to use Kirlian photography, there is no difference in the pattern between dramatic rage and intense love. It's all about where do we put our focus? What do we want to be the final outcome? Recognizing that our God-given, authentic, purposeful sense of self is the quietest, most relaxing, and contemplative manner to treat others and to treat ourselves is the only intelligent response. It's a real gift, it's a real gift. When you get to that place where you don't feel the need to fix it, argue with it, fight it, you don't need to fight the current model or the structure of anything but to rather be so brilliant. And trust me, if you're here, you've got that brilliance. You know that spark. It lives in you. The brilliance comes when we extend our consciousness beyond the current situation to create a model that is welcoming, loving, kind, and gentle to all of humanity. It's a leap, it's a leap of faith. But if you turn off the TV, my family has always been very news oriented. I don't know, those first years of life can be fabulous or not. But I grew up in a family where we were not allowed to go to bed until we watched the 11 o'clock news. I know, some people are laughing out there, you get it, right? Um, and I grew up in New York, so 11 p.m. Hmm. First of all, why is a seven-year-old going to bed at midnight? But that's a whole other story. Um, it's taken a long time for me to make my family realize I operate on an as-need-to-know basis. I trust my instincts. I'm really pretty sure if my life is in jeopardy, somebody might knock on my door. I'm pretty sure of that. So instead of using that energy that I would get all riled up about, agreeing with a newscaster, disagreeing with a newscaster, arguing with a neighbor about what the news said, I don't care. You know, I have a job to do. It's called my life. That's our main job. It's a real gift when you get to that place where you extend your consciousness to a better way, a healthier way. 
a more contemplative manner of living. It's what I call allowing divine order to prevail. And that's where the quiet power of a gentle spirit becomes your life raft. You don't have to announce anything. You don't have to fuss or fight over anything. You don't have to disagree. You don't have to be having conversations in your head about how you're going to make your point. Nobody cares, trust me. Pretend you only live in a rich internal dialogue that requires that you love yourself, that you be gentle and powerful for you, for that divine spirit that inspires this life force energy. That's where you keep your focused attention. And it really does take training. When you do that, though, you will hold on to that quiet power of inner knowingness. As you begin to weave together in the ethers a brand new pattern. We're magicians. We're spiritual magicians. So think about weaving a brand new pattern in the ethers that serves you and the whole of humanity. Maybe you will have the discipline to not even engage with the news media, preferring instead to give yourself freedom from bumping up against anything that scares you, annoys you, causes you to get into fight or flight. Think of how you can use all that newly harnessed energy. Take a walk at Radnor Lake. Go sit in your backyard and feed the birds. Then experience a true inner healing. We know from our Science of Mind teaching that it regards creation as the giving of form to the substance of mind. The whole action of spirit must be within itself, upon itself. Creation is the play of life upon its very self, the action of a limitless imagination upon an infinite law. The action of a limitless imagination upon a limitless law. We are limitless beings. We're extraordinary. Don't box yourself into a tiny little thing. I'm a, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm an independent. Eh. I'm just a short white woman from Buffalo. And I've had the grace to be taught by some of the best teachers in the world. And I listened, I listened, I listened most of the time. So let's be wise about how we use this instrument of the self. Because if my former teacher, Sri Ramana Murti Mishra, AKA Sri Brahmananda, was right when he said that we have over 300 trillion plus cells in our body. And each one of those cells hears what we think, feels our every emotion, and then if it's repetitive enough, all those cells mobilize to create what we are focusing on. Hmm. We know in our training that the mind is not up here only. That mind that is so brilliant and limitless and creative lives in every cell of our being. So as we become better students of this limitless self that we are, don't you think we have a better command of how we can direct and focus that energy? Do you want a better life? Do you want a happier life? Do you want a healthier life? Oh, please say yes, come on. Does anybody in here want a better life? Yes. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Mitch. Okay. <laughs> so let's start now by being committed to how we train and use this instrument of the self. Because if we are committed to cultivating a gentle spirit, then we must decide to show up and to connect as only beings of love. What was Sean's first song today, Common Ground? Yeah, that's what we share, Common Ground. Common Ground. So think about the ways you connect throughout your day and your weeks. What kind of person are you going to be showing up tomorrow? Can you show up with a gentle spirit, willing to observe and then to share? Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you can see their wheels turning, they're creating their rebuttal while you're talking? Yeah, don't hang out with them very much. They're not interested in communication. Um, <laughs> I was that kid that no parent would ever allow their children to walk home from school with because I knew everybody in the neighborhood. I'd stop at every house. I'd talk to everybody who was outside. I was endlessly curious about who they were, what they were doing, what was going to be for dinner. And I have carried that curiosity into my adult life. It's part of my job. I ask the most intimate questions, and I don't even flinch. And people will be like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, ah, it's part of my day job. But that curiosity has served me well because it allows me to really connect on a level that we never get with social media. There's a fabulous new book that just, literally, just came out. And it's by a wonderful social psychologist um, from New York University named Dr. Giant Jonathan Haidt. The title of the book is The Anxious Generation. It's a brilliant book, scary as all get out if you have teenage children, because he points, the graphs in the book are extraordinary. With the invention of the iPhone and then two years later, Instagram, the death rate in teenage girls has gone from up 134% since 2010. One in five undergraduates is in treatment for depression. So they have mistaken a flat screen mini computer for an actual conversation. What we're doing here is communication. We're talking. I can feel your energy coming back to me. I can see when you disagree with me because you shake your head. I can see when I say something that really resonates and you smile. That's what we look for. It is vital to our life as human beings. Um, I have a theory that in my neighborhood, if you are in my neighborhood and I work at home, I want to know who you are, who you're married to, what are your children's names, what are your pets' names. And when I walk, I say prayers. Each step is a reverent prayer to Mother Earth. I have a fabulous mailman named Don. His girlfriend had foot surgery the same year I did. We bonded over wheelchairs and casts. My fabulous trash collector, recyclable dude, is a wonderful man named Carl. His oldest daughter lives in Florida. We've talked about potential retirement sites for him. And when I walk into the Green Hills Kroger every Wednesday morning, the Starbucks team leader, Jim, sees me coming, and he gets my coffee ready. What an ego boost. Now, do I get big dividends from all these communications? Yes, I do. But I also know these guys are fabulous dudes. And I genuinely care about their life. It's called community and we can never get away from it because that's how we find our genuine empowerment. So give it a try, chat people up, have just a little conversation. You might be the one to make their day. You might be the one person that day 
that acknowledges them as a human being. Now, wouldn't that be a lovely way to extend your power and your creativity? I think so. I think so. We will never get away from all of the technology we have right now. But we as human beings with hearts and minds and this deep spiritual energy that flows through us, it's incumbent upon us to know how to deal with that technology with consciousness and kindness and integrity. And I think we should. I think it's our job. Remembering that we all share this planet together and that Mother Nature is a remarkable bomb to any tired spirit, it can soothe us. I've had so many deaths, again, already this year, in family and friends and clients. Best thing I do is go out in the backyard and feed the birds. Talk to that spirit that just departed, encouraging them to find their way, telling them, talk to me. You got a bird's eye view now. You're out of pain. You're not in trauma. Let's enjoy the journey together. Knowing, as Ernest Holmes says, that there is a peace at the center of our being, a peace that is with us always and watches over the earth quietly and tenderly as a mother watches over her child. We do know that there is a way to be a person of power while at the same time being a person of gentleness and reverence and basic kindness. It is our destiny that there is a way for us to be the ones who heal the world. It is our destiny to tap into the spiritual laws that create, support, and maintain the entire cosmos. As awakened and ever-evolving humans, it is our spiritual directive, and I believe, I believe it's also our obligation. We're here now. We signed on for this journey. Let's do a good job with it. I hope. Let's know together, and we're going to say this out loud, and if you don't like the statement, I'll know who you are. We'll chat later. <laughs> See, I work so hard at being a gentle spirit. I've got a lot of Scorpio and Leo going on here. Um, so this teaching really saved my life. I know it did. Let's, if you want to say this, say this after me. I am here to be a person of power. I am here to be a person of power. I can be gentle and powerful at the same time. I can be gentle and powerful at the same time. I understand the place I hold in the universe. I understand the place I hold in the universe. I am becoming more awakened and empowered every moment. And empowered every moment. I look forward to every moment of my magical life. I look forward to every moment of my magical life. We do indeed live in the circle of life, and I am one grateful human to be a part of this teaching that has room for many ideas and welcomes new creative input. Till we find our place on the pathway unwinding in the circle of life. Namaste. Thank you. And so it is. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to cue you. <laughs> Did you just cue me? I just cued you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, now it is time to give back to what serves us. 
Uh, if you consider CSLN your spiritual home or if something has touched you today, there are many ways you can share the love with us, and we are so very grateful for your offering. I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward now. We also have a few other ways we can accept your gift. You can use a credit card in our bookstore, or you can find a document with a QR code at the desk in the lobby. And for our online viewers, please make a contribution using the link in the description online, or you can mail your check to our PO box, which is on our website. So please say with me, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you for your loving gifts. Uh, I would like to send a, 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 some energy out to Ray and the technical team on the job that they're doing with this room. I just wanted to... Uh, thank you, Ray. So I was supposed to play here a couple, a couple of weeks ago, but I, I got the bug again. And... Um, so a little brain fog is still in my uh, in my my consciousness, but I'm getting through that now. So anyway, but um, this was a song about Easter, and um, and so I felt like I wanted to play it again today. It's called Rise and In.
smoke's coming through And the healers heal And the poets dream And the angels sing On a gentle stream Coming through A big thank you to our speaker, Rosemary Cathcart. What a beautiful lesson today. And to our guest singers, Sean Galloway, Yvonne Smith, and of course, Larry Farragali and Jimmy Lopez on percussion. Um, and to everyone who has given their time to make this service happen today, a big thank you to you all. We have just a few brief announcements, and if you want more detail about them, check the newsletter, check our website, and then you'll see all the emails and all the how to get a hold of peoples. Um, first and foremost, we're moving forward with submitting our purchase and sale agreement for the Holy Trinity property. Um, the, sellers will, the seller will be reviewing all PSAs on April 24th at their board meeting. So we'll keep you guys updated in the newsletter as we, um, as we move forward with that. A new member class is being offered on Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m. to become a member of CSLN before the annual meeting on April 28th. So to sign up for the class, or you can do that. There's a sign-up sheet in the back of the sanctuary in the lobby. Um, or if you're joining us from another CSL center and want to transfer your membership, you can contact David Arnhalter. Our annual meeting, as I mentioned, will be held after the service on April 28th. We have two candidates for the Board of Trustees. Meredith Green agreed to run for an additional term, and John Kiefer is going to be a new board member joining us. So, so thank you to Meredith and John. And because of that, we, we don't need to have a formal vote, so we get to avoid going through the whole Survey Monkey vote process online, so I know you're all glad about that. But thank you to Meredith and John for agreeing to serve. Um, and they'll be installed for their new terms beginning at our annual meeting. Uh, please hold our community members, Reverend Michael Woody, Sue Franklin, Alan Woodard, and Gary Hoffman in your healing thoughts and prayers. And before we close our service today, we would like to welcome our visitors. We're not going to ask you to stand or embarrass you or anything, but we do want to say thank you for joining us and invite you to come to the fellowship hall through the door to my left so that we can say hello and share some light refreshments after the service. And if you're watching online, please subscribe and give us, give us a thumbs up. I'd like to ask our practitioners and our speaker to come forward to the front here. And if there is something that is heavy on your heart, something that you're dealing with, something you want to attract into your life, 
related to your health, your relationships, your career, money, please don't leave today without asking one of these practitioners to pray for you as soon as the service is over. Or you can fill out a prayer request form in the secure box on the table in the hallway outside of the meditation room. And if you're watching online, you can go to our website under practitioners and contact one of us directly. So please join me for our closing prayer. I will say it in the first person and invite you to make it personal to you. So first I invite you to just take a few deep breaths and know with me that there is one God. It is the one mind, and whether I call it God, spirit, or the universe, it is the intelligence behind all creation. I was created from this magnificent power. Because I was made from it, I am one with it, and I am a magnificent individualized expression of the divine, of God. I declare that wonderful things are happening in my life right now. I release any limiting thoughts and attachment outcome because I know that when I get out of the way and allow spirit to flow, miraculous things happen. I need only state my desire. I know all action begins with my thoughts and my words. And so I affirm perfect health, freedom from any discomfort and vibrancy in all that I do. I affirm love and know that I belong, that I give love and I receive love. I affirm prosperity in all areas of my life with career or work life, life work that allows me to express, contribute and receive. I choose thoughts of love, of faith, of forgiveness, and I live in the freedom to create my heart's desire. My mind releases any fear any past hurts, any thoughts that do not serve me. I show up as love, even in and especially in those relationships and circumstances where it is the most challenging for me to see the light. I show up as love and I allow spirit to flow. For our center, we shine so brightly as we have attracted the perfect minister and the perfect home. It is with great gratitude that I speak these words, knowing that this, and even more, is already manifested. I release my word to the action of the law that always responds to my thoughts and words and says, yes, my beloved, release and let go. It is already done. And together we say, and so it is. So let's put a little love in our hearts and stand for our closing song. Just wait, just wait.
This pro. is a service of the Center for Spiritual Living Nashville. May your life be filled with joy and prosperity in every way. Learn more about our programs or contact one of our practitioners at our website, cslnashville.org. You may also want to follow us on Facebook at CSLNASH. You can make a big difference with your financial gift at lovecsln.com. Please share the link to this program with a friend and join us again next Sunday. Have a wonderful week.